I'm just going to start with some really good news <laughs> that's really quite exciting. Um, I don't use PDFs too often, but why I wanted to put this up is my boss at the moment is this lovely man, David Mott from ITV Studios, which is one of the biggest production companies in the world. And I'm doing a show called Cannonball for them, which is going to be on Channel 7 leading up to the Olympics. Um, it's a family-friendly game show set in a water theme park kind of environment. It's a brand new format. Um, we're all very excited to get a show off the ground on a, on a network and certainly in prime time. So yeah, I'm frantically putting that together with a very small team. There's me, another producer, an executive producer, a production manager, a production coordinator and a casting producer. And we're making a massive primetime television show. So. <laughs> Um, you know, and then on other shows like Big Brother or I'm a Celebrity, there's 700 crew working on those shows. So, you know, it, you can work on a show with loads of people or you can do, wear many hats on a small show as well. Um, so how does that uh, work for you guys? Well, being a freelance producer, I think, just means you've got to be able to come into a production and do whatever is required. And, you know, you might have a degree in filmmaking or, um, like myself, a journalism degree, or you might come from a corporate background where you've been a manager of hundreds of people and manage multi-million dollar budgets. But when you come on to, uh, as a freelancer, you are literally just picking up and running with whatever needs to be done. And that could be making teas and coffees, to driving around Keith Urban. <gasps> I love doing that. <laughs> <laughs> we had a moment. <laughs> but we'll I'll tell you about that later. <laughs> That's time. Oh, God, I got sidetracked. Um, two, you know, having to write a script like I did the other day. We still haven't decided on the host for this show. And the executive producer comes running in and says, oh, we've got someone who's interested in the show. Can you just write the script? And I went, the script will... What? Because we actually don't have a show. And he's like, well, just the whole show. And I went, when do you need it? And he goes, 20 minutes. And I was like, okay. So I just bashed out the first, the welcome introduction, first segment, throws to the packages, literally pulled it out of my butt. And, um, and they went, thanks, great. And, you know, I guess that's what you've got to do as a producer is just get in there and get whatever needs to be done. And half the time... You're kind of making it up as you go along. But if you've all got a background in storytelling, writing, you know, management, project management, that's kind of what producing is, I think, personally. Um, so, as a freelancer, I've been based on the Gold Coast for 10 years and I've just moved to Byron. Um, you know, I need a bit of class as a girl from the Gold Coast. I'm hoping you guys will <laughs> rub off on me at this seminar. <laughs> But I actually never told anyone I was from the Gold Coast because I found that all these fancy people in Sydney and LA and London, if I said I was from the Gold Coast, they were like, wow. <laughs> and they don't quite understand how you can actually still do your job um, but be at home. So even today, Nobody knows that I'm living in Byron Bay. I haven't told a single person in television. It's not on my Facebook. Everyone still thinks I live in Sydney. I've got a post box in Sydney. For the three nights a week I'm in Sydney, I rent a Airbnb room um, or off other friends I know in TV. And as far as the industry is concerned, I'm a Sydney-based producer. I also work in Los Angeles. I have an LA phone. I have an LA address. And as far as people in LA know, I, they, I'm there. And if I'm not there, I'm just making something somewhere else. So, you know, I personally think you don't need to tell people you're from Byron Bay if it doesn't matter, you know? Or um, people, um, all they really care about is what your credits are that can have you do that job. And if you say, you know, I love surfing and I've moved to Byron or I love you know, I love living in the rainforest and waking up to birds, they're just going to think you're a bit of a freak, even though I love that too. <laughs> so, your office. Um, I have seen a lot of people around Byron, and I'm not pointing fingers, working with their laptops in coffee shops. You don't get much done. I've tried it too. It doesn't work. If you're going to be a freelance producer working from home, you must have a proper office set up. 
It can't be your, your iPad down at the beach. It can't be at a coffee shop where you, with your mates. You literally need to treat your office as your production office. And that means set it up with all the equipment you need. If you're going to be cutting audition reels or, you know, producing sizzles, then you need to have the right software on your computer and not be ducking into libraries and doing it that way because unfortunately you're kind of giving the rest of us freelancers a bad name and you know I really try to over deliver when I get a project if I'm going to be working from home so that the executive producers and head of heads of production like Helen say okay we can trust producers to work from home um, so you know do it for everybody else in the industry as well because if you're going to do it half assed and kind of under deliver, they're not going to trust somebody next time. So have your proper office set up. Your resume, it's just don't bullshit is my hot tip because everybody in this industry knows each other and my sister is the supervising production manager in television as well and uh, between the two of us, you know, we kind of after being in this game a long time know a lot of the people who do all the hiring and I can't tell you how many times people say they've done certain shows or produce certain documentaries or won certain awards and people check their references and find out that's not true. And you just look like an idiot for a start and everybody talks about those sort of people that we call frauds. So you're better off being honest and saying, look, I'm new, I've come from something else, you know, this is what I want to do, I'm passionate, I'm willing to do anything. I would rather work with those people than the ones who've lied to get where they are. So. Please just be honest. Um, your base I kind of touched on, but for me personally, I, even though I live in Byron Bay, I do have to travel. I would love all my work to be based on the Gold Coast or Byron Bay, and occasionally that comes off. But I have to be prepared that half of the year I'm in Sydney or I'm in Los Angeles. And, you know, I have to be pre prepared financially for the year for that. So right now my contract's three months in Sydney and I just have to suck it up that 500 bucks a week of my salary is going to flights, taxis, accommodation and, you know, another life away from my family for four days a week essentially. But I also know that because I am willing to do that, I'm earning more money as a producer than probably most people who are working here trying to find one day a week here or a week on the Blues Fest there. You know, it's, you've got to t weigh that up for yourself. But I'm willing to do it. I'm totally broke, but I'm willing to do it. Um, if you want to, uh, if you're at that stage now where you sort of, you know, you just need that leg up, I totally recommend you, once you've got your resume and your office in order, is you just hit the production companies. If you're interested in doing... Um, non-scripted, which is documentaries, reality shows, um, you know, live outside broadcast events, things like that. You just hit all those production companies. And I guarantee that the head of production or the supervising production manager is reading those emails. And if they're a good one, they're applying and they're saying, thank you, we'll put you on file um, or we'll get back to you.